whenever I do a watercolour painting there's always a lot of planning involved before I pick up my brushes. In this video I'll show you how I painted a few different things on this chicken painting. And I'll talk about a few of the decisions that I made before I started painting. There were a few things on my mind before I started painting the chicken. The first and main thing was that I didn't want to fuss with the body. I wanted to paint it once and not concern myself with any detail there. This is the reference photo from Pixabay. It was taken by Leonard Niederwimmer and it has quite a few feathers showing there at the front. It would have been easy for me to get lost in the detail of those feathers if I had tried to paint them on. That area at the front was not my focal point, so there was no need for me to paint that feather detail in there. Instead, I knew all I needed to do was to portray the softness of those feathers there. And I wanted to do that all in one wash. I didn't want to layer more washes over the top because the first wash is always the freshest. I've mentioned this before in another video where it's best not to fuss with that first wash of paint after it has dried. I've found over the years of painting with watercolour that it's better to accept what it gives me rather than try to correct it. So I needed to make sure the colour was a good medium value on that first wash so that I didn't have to repaint it with another layer to deepen the colour. Last week I posted a video where I talked about paint consistency. I said that I usually start a painting with watered down paint that's quite pale. I look for the lightest colour on my subject and I paint that on first. For this painting I started with more of a medium consistency. The colour on the body of the chicken is quite dark so in order to get away with only doing one wash I needed a bit more pigment in my paint mixture. I worked on wet paper and I had to work fairly quickly so that I could get the paint on there before it dried. I wanted to create softness with my brush strokes so I had to move the brush in a way that suggested the direction and the shape of the feathers. I used a large brush to get the paint on the paper quickly and also to stop myself from fussing with it. I also wanted the chicken to glow with light. To help with that I chose mainly transparent and semi-transparent colours and I was conscious of allowing the glow of the paper to show through the paint. I decided not to paint a background so I knew that the painting would be predominantly warm in temperature. That's why I added the cool grey on the feathers on the tail and also on the legs. Even though I couldn't see a grey colour on the legs or the tail on the reference photo. I wanted a few hints of cool colour to add some relief to the warmth of the feathers. I'm going to show you all those things in a few minutes but first I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can get inspired, learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. They have thousands of classes on hundreds of topics. If you're interested in painting in watercolour, you'll find hundreds of classes. Or maybe you're interested in learning photography or how to care for your indoor plants. You name a topic and you'll find classes on it. All you do is type in what you're looking for into the search bar and hundreds of classes appear that you can browse through. I'm really busy with my work, creating new paintings and then producing new classes from those paintings. It's very time consuming and there's always a lot for me to do. It can become overwhelming at times and I feel that analysis paralysis that you get when you've got so much to do that you just don't know where to begin. So feeling overwhelmed last week, I turned to Skillshare for help. I found this class by Thomas Frank who's a productivity expert. His class is called Mastering Productivity, Create a Custom System That Works. Thomas showed me how to get more organised and improve my workflow with simple techniques that I can use every day. 
I've now stopped using my diary and sticky notes everywhere and I've started to organize everything that I have to get done in Todoist and Evernote. My goal is to organize my time better and to minimize those feelings of being overwhelmed. So wish me luck. The classes on Skillshare are ad free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched each week and the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. So if you'd like to explore the site, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description or to use my code Louise de Massey will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, back to this chicken painting now. She's painted on ash cold pressed watercolor paper and I used Winsor & Newton professional watercolor paints. As I said, I wanted to paint the body of the chicken in one wash. I didn't want to have to layer my paint in order to deepen the color. I wanted it fresh and I wanted the chicken to look soft and plump. I used a large brush to get the water on there and I made sure that my paint was ready. Along the bottom here, what I want to do is wet past the edge of the chicken. So when I put the paint on, I'll get a soft fuzzy edge along the bottom. And hopefully that will help to create a bit of distance and make the feathers look soft and fluffy. So you can see I've taken the water over the top of the legs there. On my palette, I've got three separate puddles of paint, one of gold ochre, one of burnt sienna, and also sepia. I'll use these three colors on the body of the chicken. And as I said earlier, I mixed a fair amount of pigment into the mixture so that my colors wouldn't be too pale. I've got my number seven Da Vinci Maestro and gold ochre. And this is the main color that I used on the chicken. The first wash is always the freshest, always looks the best. So I don't want to have to fiddle with this if I can help it. I'm hoping that all I'll have to do is paint this one layer of paint on. It's lighter down the left hand side here. So I'll keep the color away from that edge. I've just taken the paint out of my brush. It's just damp with a bit of water. I'm just going to push that paint away from that edge at the top here. I'm trying to keep that quite a bit lighter down the left hand side. Get some more paint and I'll keep going down here. I'm painting flat on my table at the moment too. Down the bottom here above the legs because I've wet that area the paint will drift down. I might actually lift it up off my table to make it drift further. That's caused that water to drift into there but I'm not worried about that because it'll give it a bit of texture. Put some pale colour down the bottom here along this edge where my pencil line is. And like last week when I painted the first wash on that little pink rosebud, my paint is quite patchy. It's not an even perfect wash. I'm trying to paint fluffy feathers here so I'm not looking for even coverage. Now I want some burnt sienna. I'll mix some more pigment into my mixture to make sure that it's dark enough. It's darker over the right hand side, so that's where I'll put the burnt sienna. The gold ochre is still quite wet. I keep reloading as I need more paint. Taking it right down that edge and along the bottom. I'm painting random marks with my brush but I'm trying to follow the shape of the chicken so that I can get some roundness at the front there. I've just washed my brush out and now I'll pick up some sepia. And I'll paint that on there while it's wet. Just on the right hand side where it's darker. I've taken it right to the edge there. 
and then a few random marks here and there where I see it's darker on the reference photo. And I don't want to fuss too much with this. I need to accept what it gives me once it's dry. I tend to blur my eyes too when I'm looking at the reference photo when I do this, just so that I don't get bogged down in all the detail. I'm looking for big shapes that I can see on the reference photo and when I blur my eyes I can see them better. As I work, I work broadly. I'm not looking at individual feathers at this stage. As I mentioned, I'm looking for big shapes. Up the top here, I use my big flat brush to sop up some of that paint. I'll join up with that area on the head later when it dries. I also know that it dries quite a bit lighter, so I've dropped a bit more sepia on there. Everything's still wet. I'm going to leave that alone now and I'll watch it as it starts to dry. It's still damp, but it's starting to dry through here. And seeing that that's the lighter part of the chicken, I'm going to drop some water droplets in there to create some deliberate blooms. And that will create some texture there. When it dried, this is what it looked like. And that's how I left it. I didn't fuss with that area of the painting anymore. Now I want to mix a grey. For that, I'll use French Ultramarine and I'll mix some Burnt Sienna into it. They're the two colours that I usually use whenever I mix grey. Any complementary colours you can use to mix grey, but I like these two. You can make a warm grey if you mix more Burnt Sienna into it. If you want a cooler grey, you mix more blue into it. I'll use that colour on the edge of the tail and again I'll work on the wet paper to keep my paint edges soft mainly. So that's a little bit of water there on that first section. I've switched to a smaller brush. This is a zero. And right on the edge of the feathers, even though they're white on the reference photo, I'm going to paint a little bit of grey. I'm not painting a background. If I was painting the background in, I could have left them white and the background would have formed the edge of the feathers. I'm using this grey because it makes a beautiful contrast to the gold ochre and the burnt sienna that I've been using. This introduces a cooler colour to offset all the warm colours that I've been using. I've got my number four brush here to wet the next section with water. I'll put the paint where my pencil lines are and I'll leave the areas where I don't have a pencil line. I'll leave them without any paint and that will create a lost edge. So just where the pencil line is, that's where the paint goes and it bleeds over the paper. I also used that grey that I mixed on the two legs even though I don't see that colour on the reference photo. I painted this colour down here because I wanted to repeat the colour. If I use a colour somewhere in a painting, I try to repeat that same colour somewhere else in the painting. I wet the first leg with water and now I've wet this one with water as well. And I paint the grey down the left hand side and then it bleeds back over the leg. And to stop the chicken from looking like it's floating in the air, I painted a little shadow underneath the feet with that same colour. So I wet the paper first to help me get soft paint edges and then I ran it along the bottom of the feet. I try as much as I can to limit the amount of colours that I use. When the grey was dry, I re-wet the legs with water and I mixed some gold ochre and sepia together and I painted that on them as well on the wet paper. I could stop here and leave them as I've got them now, 
but I thought I'd put some detail down here. I don't want to overdo them and put too much detail because I don't want to draw the viewer's eye down here. So I'm painting them on freehand. I haven't drawn any pencil lines for myself. I can see some diagonal shapes. So that's what I'm drawing on. And this is one of the last things that I did. I'm getting some of the yellow on my big brush. Mix it with water. And I'm going to glaze it over the top right here at my focal point and that will give it a beautiful glow. So everything is completely dry. Then I take my number seven brush. It's clean. It's got no paint on it and I soften any edges that I can see. I cut her off my board and there she is finished. I plan to paint a rooster soon in a similar way so that I'll have a matching pair. So keep an eye out for that tutorial as well. The full length tutorial of this little girl is one of the tutorials that I'll be posting on my Patreon site this month. So I'd love you to join us there. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. That area at the front, 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 the front, that, that area at the front. Yep. This is three. Take one. Let's put in a bit of lippy on. I wanted to create softness with my brush strokes. So I had to move the brush in a way that suggested the direction and the shape of the feathers. So I used a large, I did that. I wanted to create softness with my brush strokes. With my brush strokes. I wanted to create softness with my brush strokes, so I had to move the brush in a way that suggested the direction and the shape of the feather. It's really gentle, it's really gently, you know, gently. I used a large, <coughs> excuse me. to care for your indoor plants you name it a topic yeah just name it a topic I'm really busy with my work creating new paintings and then producing new tutor tutor tutorials classes from those paintings I've now stopped using my diary and my diary is 